Hello everyone. This is image 25 for the Summer Interpretation Seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. As you have progressed with your interpretation skills, this video is about a radiographic finding of a systemic disease. We have two periapical radiographs to identify the features of renal osteodystrophy. These are the two periapical radiographs. We have one radiograph of maxillary left premolar molar region and we have a mandibular right first molar radiograph. These radiographs were shared with me by Dr. Tom Morian and Dr. Jim Gambucci. Before exploring the radiographs, let's review the history of the patient. These radiographs are from a 41-year-old female. She is in end-stage chronic kidney disease. Previously, she had a kidney transplant and she has not been to the dentist in 20 years. Going back to the radiographs, obviously you can see the large carious lesion of the maxillary left first molar and the mandibular right first molar. And you can also see the restorations on the mandibular right second premolar and the second molar. In this video, we are going to skip the carious lesions as we focus on the features of renal osteodystrophy. The striking findings are in the trabecular patterns. Typically, trabecular patterns are almost horizontal. In these radiographs, you can see that the trabecular patterns are random. Here, as well as in the maxillary alveolar bones. These trabecular patterns are small. Also, you can see that lamina dura of several teeth are thin or missing. Same here on the mandibular arch, we do not see the lamina dura. Here, very faint. These features may be subtle and may easily be missed. I cannot emphasize enough on this statement that the eye sees only what the mind is prepared to comprehend, or the eyes see only what the mind knows. Every time when you read a radiograph, look beyond the common findings, look beyond caries and periapical lesions. There may be other findings. In some patients with renal osteodystrophy, the sinus floor may be thin. In our patient, the sinus floor is well corticated. We have a panoramic radiograph of the same patient. In this panoramic radiograph, we see that the trabecular patterns are irregular, both in the mandible as well as in the maxilla. In some cases, the inferior alveolar canal may be thin or missing. In our patient, we see the left canal is fairly well defined. The right canal is not so well defined. In some patients, you will also see very thin inferior border of the mandible. If you have a skull radiograph, you may also see a feature known as salt and pepper appearance. These bony findings are typical of hyperparathyroidism. So hyperparathyroidism can be of two types. The primary hyperparathyroidism causes overproduction of PTH. This is from benign adenoma of one of the four parathyroid glands. The secondary hyperparathyroidism is a compensatory overproduction of PTH. This can be in response to conditions that causes hypocalcemia, such as renal osteodystrophy, poor intake of calcium, or poor absorption of vitamin D. These papers are some good readings about radiographic findings of renal osteodystrophy or chronic kidney disease. Thank you very much. Hope you will join me on a different video.